This is Score Dress Up Part Two tutorial. Um, so in this in this part two, let's look at adding extra um, objects to your score. So first of all, let me go ahead and get my mouse theorem going, and I'll initialize it here. Oops. Uh, let's see. Sorry. Recompile, and then. Initialize that. Boot my server. Start my synth. All right, it's working. Uh, so one thing I thought I'd do is add some shapes. And also, remember you can use this s dot make window, and you can do things like mute. So I'm going to go ahead and mute that. So it's not too annoying just yet. And one thing I can do is maybe make some regions of dynamics. Now, remember the mouse theorem is set up so that uh, to the very left, the mouse axis is quiet, and the very right is quite loud. So uh, let me just show you, first of all, uh, a little utility. We can do something very quickly. And simply enough, we can print. And we'll print the mouse x coordinate. Okay, so down here now, uh, at the frame rate, will come out the mouse x coordinate. So if I go ahead and do that, uh, of course I have to be able to see it. So uh, let's see, what can I do here? Okay, so here's a little thing, a little problem. So since it's I, I've, I've designed it to take up the whole screen, but uh, we're, we can't see the actual printout. So let me just reduce that uh, slightly because, in fact, we're just interested in the mouse x coordinate anyways. So that's um, that's width and then that's height. So if, I'm, if I reduce the height, say, to about 900 maybe, and that should give me plenty of room to be able to see the printout still. That's perfect. Okay. And then I'll go and unmute uh, this. I'm going to turn the volume way down because it's going to be quite loud. And then... I can sort of see my coordinates. So let's just do a rough thing. Let's say one to about 500, maybe be the first region, and then one to about 1,000. So maybe we'll do every 500, and then this will be the loudest. Okay, so that's great. And I can, action, I can actually just stop this now. So I'll recompile there. And um, and so I was thinking we can put some big panels for each each bit. So if I want the lines to be on top of the panels, I'm going to have to draw the panels behind the lines. All right. And sorry, let me just put it back to the original dimensions there. So basically I'll need it 1080 high and then some 0 to 500, etc. So I'm just going to use the rect function there and the way the rect works and remember you can look these up let me just give you an example there if you if you highlight the the function you're interested in and right click to find in reference it should bring up and there's a local a local set of help files as well as online and it'll it'll tell you the syntax and variations on the syntax and then what all the parameters are. So the basic one is A, B, C, D, which is um, you know x and y coordinate, and then a width and the height. And that's that's pretty standard for many <coughs> many drawing uh, shapes. So x and y. Let's uh, what did we say? So x is going to be zero, and y is going to be zero, right? Because we want it from the very top. The width is going to be five hundred, and the height is going to be. Um, 1080, is that right? Yeah, 1080. All right. So let's see what happens when we do that. So we have a big white panel over that bit. Of course, you can change the color by using fill. And um, let's do a no stroke so that we don't get any stroke. And then let's do a fill. And of course, I can use my colors up, up there that I've already had. So mint, if I want to do that, for example. Of course, now this line will disappear. So let's just make that a black line and uh, let's see is there any other mint no. okay let's run that see what that looks like great 
All right. So you can do that. Another uh, possibility, of course, now, oh, well, let's first, let's go ahead and uh, uh, leave, well, I'll leave the no stroke. And then I'll just copy the panels. So now the no stroke is going to apply to everything until the next stroke, which is fine because I don't want stroke on any of my panels. And I'll just put in some colors here just for efficiency sake. And of course you can make variables as well. Uh, right, the width is 1920. So I don't know how many I'll need, but we'll see. Okay, so the red one then will be uh, start at 500. The Y is still zero because we want it to draw from the top all the way to the bottom. And the width will still always be 500. And uh, the height will be the, the height of the, the thing. So they're, they're all set. So basically, I just have to change that one variable for each one, 1,000. This will be 1,500. Okay. And then, of course, change the color. We'll make this one blue because I have defined the blue here. And maybe we'll go ahead and make some variables. Let's make that green. Uh, let's make that whatever. Yellow. Gosh, I forgot what yellow was. I think it's... Oops. I can always change the name. Something like that. Okay. And we'll call this yellow. And let's see how that looks. Oh, it was a yellow. Okay, so there you go. So you have, of course, you might want to change the, the color of that line or make them black. So now you have panels. So if I go over here, actually, I didn't want to... If I just run these again. Now I have uh, dynamics panels. Great. Okay, so that's one approach, of course. Of course, if you want to maybe just make some vertical lines. You can do that as well. Um, and we'll go over labels in another tutorial. Now, just I want to show you now using transparency. I want to show you what might happen if we went ahead and um, made sort of like faded panels. So if you drew these, in order to draw these, oops, in order to draw these over the lines, we have to put them after the line. So it draws all the lines first, and then it draws these panels on top of them. So if we went ahead and did that, I can get rid of the mouse X as well. Comment that out. If I did that and ran it, you see there's no lines because it's drawn or the lines, right? Um, and uh, so now we can use a transparency um, argument. So in this case, we're not going to be able to use the, um, well, we can use the variables, but let's go ahead and put this in. So if I copy the mint, put these in RGB values in manually. Now these classes, actually, their methods and classes are, quite, are smart. So they know, based on the number and type of arguments that you put in, what type of um, result you're looking for, really. So there's RGB, but there's also another um, possibility was is RGBA, which is the alpha, which is the transparency. So if I go ahead and make my mint one, um, let's say, so it's 0 to 255, 255 being completely opaque. If I just say maybe make it 50, let's see what happens. And there you go, and you've got our lines back, because now those are being seen through the green uh, or the mint uh, panel. Okay, and you can make it more or less opaque as you go along. So if I, for example, make it 150, you see there, it's more opaque and something like 200. You can sort of barely see the lines there. 
Okay, and then you can go ahead and do the same thing for the rest of the panels. I won't do it now. So you can use the RGBA or you can use the RGB. And if you wanted to create some variables up here as well, you can actually, you know, create your own mint, mint transparent. Maybe like that. And then add a alpha of your choice. Okay, so that's part two of the dress up tutorial.